Greetings and salutations, loyal viewers of this channel. My name is Sean, and today I want to talk about what might be the most ridiculous story I've seen in at least the last 15 minutes. And of course, that is the potential war that is going on at a homeless encampment in Seattle right near a hospital. You're gonna want to stay tuned to this story because it gets absolutely absurd. But before we get into that, thank you to everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you, give me the money. Okay. And thank you to the podcast listeners, Spotify, Apple, and Google's podcasting platform. Yeah, I was surprised, Preston, today when we came back to the scene of this fire and explosion, and we found that they were actually rebuilding the tent and had installed what looks like some security cameras to watch over that tent. So the local news report jumps right into this story. I haven't even had time to put my pants on before they're already on the scene talking about how they actually are rebuilding this homeless encampment. But what I think is absolutely crucial is what you see in the lower third and for my podcast listeners out there it says that the explosion appears to be a targeted attack so we have an instance where homeless encampments are running wild this one happens to be on state property which by the way is one of the reasons why the local news reporter is going to talk about uh, trying to address this with the state government but yeah apparently this explosion that went down might have been an intentional explosion from this encampment or somebody targeting this encampment and since this happens to be on state property right near one of the largest hospitals in the region this would seem like a disastrous scenario also this is not really noted by the local news but you can see it in the video they're right by a main highway we're asking state officials what they're going to do about this but it's clear the state has little to no control over what's happening on their property right next to the region's main hospital now i have big problems with this i have big problems with cities in the pacific and how they handle homeless encampments because you would think logically if you're a state government if you're competent in any way and remember this is not dependent on the city council of seattle who may be a lost cause that you would be able to do something about this obvious hazard right here i mean again i always talk about this i always reference this but if you're a homeowner and you trim your trees on your own property you're going to get visited by a state inspector i remember in san francisco there was recently a story and a news report about how the san francisco pd showed up because elon musk was changing the sign of twitter headquarters without a permit they're right there they're right on you that kind of law enforcement still appears to exist that still appears to be what's going on however a homeless encampment getting completely out of hand leading to an explosion right near a major highway right near a major hospital seems to be completely outside the power of the state's control because they're just rebuilding the encampment the day after after this incredibly dangerous thing you can see it on the video they decided that they're gonna just start it right back up again and nobody seems to have any answers about what they're going to do about these people this explosive fire outside of seattle's main hospital was intentionally started in a targeted attack that from a law enforcement source with knowledge of the police investigation. Also, and I'm not saying that this is the genesis or the cause of many of the fires that we've seen in the Pacific Northwest, but this is a giant fire in the Pacific Northwest. We've seen how drought-like conditions, we're in the middle of summer, it's hot, can lead to these kind of fires spreading like madness, and this, again, doesn't seem to be within the purview of the state government. I mean, seriously, if you're a podcast listener, you might be missing out. The explosion is huge. The fireball is huge. It's right in this wooded area between the highway and between the hospital. And again, this is dangerously close to being an incredibly dangerous situation for people in the immediate area, but also for people in the Pacific Northwest as a whole. Explosive fire outside of Seattle's main hospital was intentionally started in a targeted attack. That from a law enforcement source with knowledge of the police investigation who confirms investigators think this may have been the result of an ongoing drug feud within encampments on state property in downtown Seattle. You know, sometimes you hear a few words. Sometimes you hear those words combined in a particular order and you think to yourself, there is no way a rational adult just said what was said without any hesitation. 
This local news reporter says it appears that this explosion, this intentional fire that was set near a hospital, may have been part of an ongoing drug feud that is happening between encampments, which, by the way, are all located on state property. You know, like, it's just a normal day in Seattle. You know, you got your encampments. There's nothing you could do about it because why have competent enforcement against homeless people because they're sad victims way better to let them live in open air drug markets and you know they got into a dispute over those drugs that they're addicted to that they're suffering from and uh one of them decided to blow up the other one's camp this is a perfectly normal story after this we're gonna visit a local coffee shop that's substituting creamer with a new kind of plant-based milk because this is apparently just a standard day in the city of seattle Days later, and the encampment is already being rebuilt in the same spot. We saw this tent in a video surveillance camera installed on a nearby tree. We also saw people using power tools to expand the makeshift buildings and install fencing into this illegal encampment on state property just feet from the hospital. Again, I just ask anybody who lives in a major metropolitan area, who lives in a left-wing area, what would happen to you if you were to, you know, install a fence on your own property without the proper permits, without going to the zoning commission, the city inspector, and all of that. How fast would you be fined? How fast would they have these people out there in order to extract money from you because you wanted to improve your own property? You can't even do major modifications within your own home without the proper permitting and whatnot in these major cities, yet they're allowed to insult surveillance cameras, do construction where they're putting up fencing and all this stuff. I'm sure that's all up to code and is not going to create any kind of hazard. I'm sure when the next fire actually appears and these people are trying to escape, they've installed the proper emergency exits in those fencing because the city of Seattle is completely powerless to do anything and the state of Washington also completely powerless in order to intercede on these potentially definitely up to code kind of things i mean have you ever seen like an image of a door in new york city when they're doing construction the permits if it's a glass door oftentimes will take up all of the glass you won't be able to see inside i'm sure seattle has similar kind of issues in fact many places on the west coast have worse housing regulations worse kind of improvement regulations and construction regulations than even cities on the east coast but again this is just allowed to go on. This is perfectly normal. The guy on the local news said this without bursting out laughing, without yelling it in anger, without any of the normal, sane, rational responses to seeing this post an explosion. And again, I need to emphasize, I know you guys get on me for repeating, it's right near a highway and it's right near a hospital. We do know that fires in these encampments are totally unacceptable. Mayor Bruce Harrell said he's pushing the state to deal with the encampments along I-5 in downtown Seattle. I'm looking for that answer from the state as we speak. So I hope that they give us a, an aggressive timeline and one that works for with the resources that they have. Listen, I have my problems with the Republican Party, obviously. I've talked about it on this channel, even though I'm not one of those day-to-day -day headline news and politics kind of YouTube channels. But you can't vote for the Democratic Party. You just can't do it. What this guy just said, what the mayor of Seattle just said, is so absurd and stupid, it makes me want to say things that potentially could get me banned off the internet.com. This guy said, the fires in the encampments is totally unacceptable. The encampments are totally unacceptable. You need to get them out. The fires are a consequence of that. Even in this drastic situation where you have warring encampments right near a hospital, right near a highway, the mayor's like, well, as long as they don't do fires, I mean, they could have their drug disputes, there could be violence, there could be all sorts of issues, they could be building all this ridiculous, unstable construction, but as long as they don't have fires, that that's, that's where we draw the line, then it's totally fine. And by the way, he's also trying to push the mayor to do something. How about you do something? How about you call up this organization? You might have heard of them somewhere, guys. I, I don't know if you guys are aware of them. Called the Seattle Police Department. You say, Seattle Police Department go to this area, you know, in the same way that they did fine Elon Musk for changing his sign outside of Twitter with the crane and the proper equipment, and then get these people out of there. And when you find out that they actually have criminal records, arrest them. That, that will solve the problem. Once you start enforcing anti-camping ordinances, anti-camping laws, guess what? You'll see a magical change in this kind of situation. And you won't have to worry about fires in the encampments by the hospital and by the highway because you will have removed them.
This stretch of I-5 is known for drug trafficking encampments, including this drug lab that erupted in flames earlier this year. Investigators found guns, drugs, and cash and say the tent had a camera so drug dealers could monitor the encampment. Again, I'm hearing the words coming from this local news broadcaster, and I swear, I feel like I'm reading a transcript of this report because none of the outrage, none of the sense of urgency is in the tone of this presenter. Look at this video right here. It's a shooting up blaze that they just described as being a part of a drug lab gone wrong. Maybe they're making meth or something like that. And it's right by the highway. People have to drive by this. Again, hospital nearby. I don't know how many times I have to say this. Now, I'm not one of these people who's like drug people are criminals and they need to be locked up. But I do believe that they're sick and it's actually a sick society that enables these people. And by the way, if you're making drugs in the highway, and you're putting people in danger, that's a far different issue from somebody who actually has to deal with the problems of being addicted to consuming drugs. So while I want these people to be put in rehab, by the way, by force, not just asking them nicely and offering them services, you got to get them in rehab. It's one thing for you to have issues with drugs and a good supportive family and all that or be able to manage those issues. It's a completely different thing when you clearly and obviously can't take care of yourself and you you're camping on the street and it's an even more completely different thing when you're selling drugs when you're stockpiling weapons right on the highway and you're getting into drug wars that involve explosions that could kill other people that are addicted and living around this area and again i will say it it's on state property now i often reference the ninth circuit court of appeals ruling about how homeless people have a god tier right to camp in public they have a super unbelievable 10,000 level constitutional right in order to do so and technically this is state property so they may feel like this is something that they cannot go against but the thing is pass a law and go against it try it test this push it to the supreme court do whatever you have to do in order to stop this that's a ridiculous ruling the ninth circuit court of appeals cannot just craft constitutional rights whole cloth and you need to actually push back to it rather than just resign yourself to saying this is the normal operating procedure in the city of seattle in washington state and in the entire west part of this country covered by that circuit court King County Council Member Reagan Dunn says the state needs to remove known drug encampments and keep them from coming back. You've got to aggressively enforce our laws and our codes. We've got to make it harder for the drug addicts to come here. And then also, in addition to all of that, you've got to have a safety valve that we can get them into treatment. Well, would you look at that? We have somebody who's actually making sense. He's actually proposing what I said earlier on, that you have to remove these people, shut down the known drug encampments, enforce the laws. I know this is a shocking proposition for many people on the left. And by the way, get these people that are addicted into treatment. Again, the fires, the explosions, the attacks and counterattacks. This is not the more compassionate policy. It is not compassionate to allow people to destroy themselves in this way, get into all these disputes just because you're afraid of using the stick that is law enforcement. This is criminality. This is a danger to people around them. But well, we also wanted to get answers from Council Member Kashama Sawant, who represents this area. We asked her today, what is she doing to monitor or help or come up with a plan for this area on state property next to the hospital with these illegal encampments? Her office provided no response. Yeah, and of course, they reach out to the representative for this area, the most compassionate, I'm sure, and her office has no response. It's only a major fire, a major explosion, a giant problem in her district, and why would she bother to even address it? Now, I actually do have some stats related to arson in terms of the Chinatown area of Seattle, which just goes to show you how suddenly these kind of things will spike. And essentially, there were something like four arsons all the way through June of this year. And now there have been seven in the month of July because this is just a thing that percolates out of nowhere. Now, as we talked about multiple times on this channel, arson, thankfully, is exceedingly rare in the United States of America. We've looked at major cities that report 600% increases or things like that. And we find out that it's going from like two to ten. It's, it's, not, it's not that crazy of a thing 
in terms of a problem. However, this specific issue on this specific section of highway appears to be an issue that comes up over and over and over again. And you have all these different authorities that could be addressing the issue that just refuse to do so. You have all these people whose job it is to handle this kind of thing and none of them are acting. They have like a decision paralysis because God forbid somebody says you're not treating the poor innocent Aladdins that are going to a fire war in this homeless encampment because oh my god they're just trying to feed their family by burning each other up in the encampments anecdotally at the data any way you slice it we have let this place go our community the seattle area over the last decade it's not good now overall obviously this is a shocking story this should be troubling to us as a nation but i want to point out that what was said earlier on in this video by the king county councilman is true the fact is, they let this get this bad over decades, and every single month, every single year that we don't address this problem, more and more people become more and more lost, more and more mental health issues become more aggravated, more and more people become addicted, more addicts end up dying, and more addictions end up getting stronger because people refuse to do what is necessary. It's going to be a long process to clean this up, but you have to engage today. In fact, you had to have done this or started this yesterday, last year, last month, whatever, the last 10 years. But the fact of the matter is, the longer this problem is put off, the longer it's ignored, the longer it's going to take to solve, and this is going to lead to increases in criminality and all sorts of other issues that people couldn't even imagine. When you're addicted to these substances, you're losing a part of yourself. Your rational thinking, your moral standards are basically non-existent. This is one of the reasons why, even though crime isn't as bad as it's ever been because of the addictive nature of these drugs we're seeing crimes that are as horrible as we've ever seen individual instances that are becoming more and more common over time so yeah it is not the more compassionate thing to let this go unchallenged it is not graceful it's not kind it's cruel it's nasty and it's one of the things that we need to reject as a society but here's the thing those are just my thoughts let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you like this video show them by leaving a like subscribe for more content follow me on my social media support me via the support links in the description of this video this is been me talking about the absolute madness that is seattle's highway till next time